Hi everyone as we begin our worship and welcome you to St Mary's Radcliffe on Trent and St Peter and St Paul Shelford. Uh, it's really good to be worshipping with you all today. Uh, for those who know Radcliffe, um, perhaps here's a little quiz. Can you guess where I'm recording from? Because I take quite a few opening services from around the village. See if you can guess where I am. But as we come uh, this week, we're thinking as a church about how we can be a spirit-filled community. Um, and we have been looking at being filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a little while, Sue will preach uh, to us and bring the word. But here are some words from scripture, from Joel. In those days I will pour out my spirit on my servants, both men and women, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And suddenly from heaven came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. Now the wind today has been quite strong, but at the moment it's uh, just a gentle breeze. But as we begin uh, our welcome, we ask that, Lord, you would blow your, the wind of your spirit through us so that we may really express your love in our village and in our community. And the Holy Spirit blew like a mighty rushing wind. Father, so fill us, so move us, so empower us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we can be your people in this place, empowered with love and your spirit. Captured my heart with this love Cause 
nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. Beautiful one, I love you, beautiful one. I adore beautiful one, my soul must sing. Beautiful one, I love you, beautiful one. I adore beautiful one, my soul. Sing, my soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful one, oh my soul, my soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful.
And so, Lord, we just praise you and thank you that you build the house. Unless we turn to you, unless we come to you and ask you to build the house, Lord, we build it in vain. Father, we just pray for your Holy Spirit to so move in our community that as we build your church, Lord, as we move out of lockdown, Lord, as we reach out, help us, come with us, fill us, Lord, fill us, fill us. Come, Holy Spirit, come and fill us. And Father, as you fill us, we pray that you will open our hearts, Lord, to receive from you the message that you have sent via Sue. Father, be with us. Soften our hearts. Reach into our hearts. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Come like the mighty wind. Come in power and speak to each one of us now. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. Well, hello. It's good to be with you this morning as we continue our mini-series on the Holy Spirit um, within our focus on vision and strategy. So let's begin with a quick summary of the things that the Holy Spirit is and does some of them anyway. So the Holy Spirit gives us new life. He makes us more like Jesus and helps us to grow in faith. He reveals Jesus to us, especially as we read the Bible, and he draws us closer to him. He grows supernatural fruit and gives supernatural gifts. He enables prayer and worship and empowers us for service and for evangelism. The Holy Spirit comes as a seal. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. The Holy Spirit comes to make us God's children. We belong to him as children. And it's the Holy Spirit who makes this real in our experience. You received God's Holy Spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. And as we know that word Abba is more like our word Daddy, denotes affection and intimacy. And finally, the spirit who fills us is the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. Wow. So with all that in mind, let's move to our passage for today. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, thanks, Melanie. So let's dive in, shall we? You might have noticed there's a sort of list there, isn't there? Um, pairs of opposites, if you like. And I've tried to make that a bit clearer by the way I've, I've laid it out. Um, firstly, don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. A lot of the Psalms and the Proverbs pick up on this contrast between wisdom and foolishness. And in the Bible, foolishness is portrayed as ignorance of and willful rebel rebellion against God and his will. Jesus himself talked about the wise and foolish builders, didn't he? And the distinction between them 
is that one man listens to the word of God and then puts it into practice and the other one listens to the word of God but doesn't choose to do anything about it. So all this is implied in Paul's instruction to us not to live like fools but like those who are wise who live in accordance with God's will. And this is emphasized again. Don't be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. Our choice is between living according to the ways of the world or living to please God. In this instance, the Lord's will isn't so much about specific personal guidance, but about his whole plan to save the world. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything under the authority of Christ everything in heaven and on earth and we're instructed to understand this plan and in this sense it's it's not only getting our heads around it but working out what it means for me this is God's plan how does it affect how I live now today so that's one for you to ponder one specific way we're told not to be foolish is by not being drunk with wine. Just as foolishness and wisdom are opposites, so are being drunk with wine and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being drunk on alcohol means we give up control of our body and our mind. You probably know that alcohol is actually a depressant. In fact, it depresses first and foremost the highest centres of all the brain. Everything that makes us behave at best and highest. In contrast to this, the Holy Spirit produces in us wonderful qualities, including self-control. The more full of the Spirit we are, the more self-control we will have. And the same with love, joy, peace, creativity, serving at tables. I really like that one of the first people recorded in the Bible to be filled with the Holy Spirit was this guy called Bezalel. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of crafts. I think it's so exciting that the Spirit of God fills Bezalel and he receives not only wisdom, understanding and knowledge, the kind of things we've just been talking about, but also a whole bucket load of creativity as well. I suppose you might expect me to pick up on that because you know that I love all things crafty. But really, we shouldn't be surprised. The Spirit comes to stamp us with the image of God, who is, of course, the master craftsman. Excessive alcohol also dehumanises. We've all seen and experienced plenty of evidence of this. But in contrast to this, the Spirit of God makes us more fully human, more like Jesus. By the power of the Spirit, we undergo a radical transformation. As Paul says, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. 
This work of the Spirit is the fulfilment of the promise in Ezekiel 36. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart and I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. Doesn't it blow your mind that God gave this promise to his people about 600 years before Jesus was born? When we consider who the Holy Spirit is and all that he does, it's not surprising that Paul tells us to be filled with him, is it? And it is an authoritative command. It's not an option. We have no hope of living in the way we're called to unless we are filled with the Spirit of God. It's impossible. So there are a couple of things we need to note about this phrase be filled with the Spirit. Firstly, it's present continuous tense. So, more accurately translated, keep on being filled. When Jesus talked about being filled with the Spirit, he used the idea of being thirsty. Those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. When you think about it, we get thirsty a lot, don't we, in our day-to-day -day lives. One glass of water isn't enough. And the more energy we use, and the hotter it is, the more thirsty we get. And we certainly wouldn't say, well, I had a really big drink about 10 years ago, I don't need any more. The good news is we can drink as much of the spirit as we want to. The danger is we forget where the true source of refreshment lies and end up dehydrated even if we're not actually drunk with wine. Secondly, be filled is in the plural form. So as well as being filled individually, Paul is saying we need to be filled together. When we come together in his presence to worship, we can expect the Holy Spirit to fill our gathering. Do you remember how the glory of the Lord filled the temple? Well, it's like that, except that we are as you know, the living temple. And thirdly, this phrase is passive. Be filled as in, let the Spirit fill you. We can't fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he's called the Holy Ghost, isn't he? And it really helped me when I found out that that word ghost derives from an old English word meaning guest. He is a holy guest and we need to welcome him and make sure he feels at home. Both Ben and Mark have emphasised that the key to the spirit-filled life is a surrendered life. The way to more power, more love, more kingdom, more authority, more new Christians, more life, all those things we long for, is greater submission, deeper surrender, more costly obedience, as we follow the example of Jesus, our King. And Paul also tells us two things that will specifically limit our fullness. 
we are warned not to quench the spirit. This is particularly in the context of treating prophecies with contempt. If we want our gatherings to be filled with his presence, we need to guard against cynicism when it comes to prophecy or any of the other supernatural gifts, but instead to learn to grow in receiving them and using them wisely. And we're also warned not to grieve or bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit by the way we live. And this again has a personal and a corporate aspect. If you look at the verses surrounding this one, you'll see that anything we do or say that undermines the unity that the Spirit brings will grieve him. He creates the unity, but we are responsible for keeping it. Our holy guest won't feel welcome if we're not choosing to love one another. And we're going to pause here for prayer. So we've been hearing about being filled with the Holy Spirit and now we're going to have an opportunity to, to do just that. Um, so if you just take a minute to prepare your heart. You might want to close your eyes. You might want to put your hands out ready to receive all that he has for you today. And then we'll pray. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you. All that we are in all that we have today. And we ask that you'll come. Will you come and fill us to overflowing as you promised to do. Lord, we long for those bubbling springs of water to fill our lives with all the good things that you bring. And now we just wait for him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And as you keep receiving from him, it might help you to consider this jar it could represent you and me and as I pour the water in that could be the Holy Spirit coming to fill us There we are, full. <laughs> but what happens if I take out one of these stones? What happens if I take out another one? Oh look, I can, there's room for a bit more. I can be filled even more. So these stones could represent things that might limit our fullness, couldn't they? There might be someone we need to forgive. There might be something we need forgiveness for. There might be a really big disappointment. It 
might be a connection with the stony heart we heard about earlier. So as you're receiving from him, just be asking as well, is there anything, Lord, I need to say sorry for? Anything I need to surrender to you again today so that you can fill me completely and utterly to overflowing. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So if you want to continue receiving from the Lord, that's fine. You keep doing that. And the rest of us, we've just got a few more minutes in Ephesians. So Paul goes on to list some of the benefits of being filled with the Spirit. When we are filled with him, we'll find ourselves encouraging one another in our faith, especially through the Bible, worshipping, being thankful and submitting to one another. And I just want to highlight one of those things today. And it's where it says, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. So notice that worship that is spirit-filled comes from our heart, the deepest place in us. And as I was preparing, um, I sensed the Holy Spirit saying, asking me to do something quite specific, um, but I have to be brave, so forgive me if I wobble. See, there's a line of a song in my head, and. I think I need to sing it to you, but there's more. Um, I sense that he's saying that for many of us, we've lost our song. Um, some this year, I know that's true for me. We've lost our song and it might've happened years ago or it could have been a gradual process and we've not really been aware of it till now. But for some of us, our song is bound up in chains somewhere down here, trapped like a bird in a cage. And there are physical reasons for this. Um, we haven't been coming together to sing, have we? So. Um, we've literally lost our singing voices. The muscles are creaky and squeaky and the sound that comes out <laughs> matches that. But also there are emotional and spiritual reasons why singing and making music from our hearts to the Lord is something we might have lost. And I don't need to go, go through all those. You can work out what they might be. But basically, they make us feel like we don't want to sing. But the thing is, whatever circumstances surround us, our God doesn't change, does he? He's still sovereign Lord of heaven and earth worthy to receive honour and glory. Millions of angels sing his praise day and night. All creation sings his praise. And when we sing, we sing with them. In the Psalms, we find songs expressing all kinds of feelings to God in the context of praise. And from our hearts, doesn't necessarily mean from a happy heart but it's real and authentic and honest and painful. Singing with a lump in your throat is really hard to do and it hurts. 
but we are encouraged to bring this sacrifice of praise to our loving, faithful, merciful God, who is good, kind, compassionate, gracious, and for us. He is for us. He is on our side, as that beautiful blessing song reminds us with the words from Romans. So, I have this line of a song in my head, as I said, um, and in a moment I'm going to sing it and repeat it a few times. And please could you respond however you feel the Spirit is leading you. Either pray quietly or join me. And if you feel this word is for you and you want your song back, then I'd really encourage you to stand with me. And if you can, and sing this line. Be brave and, and join in. Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise again, sing his praise again. Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise again, sing his praise again. Awake my soul and sing. Sing his praise again, sing his praise again. Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise again, sing his praise again. So I believe that as we do this, the Spirit of God is coming to release praise in us. He's coming to release the birds from the cages, as he promised, he'll give us a new song and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair as we take this step of obedience. So whether you're standing or in your heart, join me with this simple song of praise. Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise again. Sing his praise again. Awake my soul and sing. Sing his praise again. Sing his praise again. Awake my soul and sing. Sing his praise again. Sing his praise again. Awake my soul and sing. Sing his praise again. Sing his praise again. All for you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the good news is that Jesus will fill us with his Holy Spirit when we ask him. And in order to keep on being filled, we need to keep on asking and choosing to please him. He will then, among other things, give us the desire and the ability to love him and love one another. He will also guide us, teach us, comfort us, unite us, free us up, advise us, Make us more like Jesus. Equip us, give us gifts, empower us, protect us, tell us what to say in difficult situations and pray for us. Hallelujah. Let's keep on being filled. And Rob and Andrea are going to lead us in a new song called Fresh Wind Now. And can I encourage you to make it your prayer for today? See you later. Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire of God. 
And so, Holy Spirit, come as we uh, go out into the week, out into the week ahead, that we take you, Lord, we take you with us. So the fire of God change us, and we shall be changed. The wind of God change us, and we shall be changed. The breath of God change us, and we shall be changed. The Spirit of God change us, and we shall be changed. Come Holy Spirit. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all in this coming week, as we take you into the week ahead. Amen. And so may I welcome you to join us now for uh, Coffee Zoom, uh, which you can find the link in the Pews News. And if you don't get the Pews News, can you please get in touch with our church office or through our website and make that link so that you too can join us. Really look forward to seeing people. It's a real time of fellowship and friendship and getting to know one another. So do join us. Thank you. God bless.